Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and this is part two of my Mexican Strat reboot series of videos that I'm working on. Uh, in the first one, I stripped all of my home done gold sparkle finish off of this. Uh, some people were upset about that. Some people are fine with it. I'm fine with it. But anyways, since then, I've given it a nice uh, solid sand. I put some Bondo on the gashes, the deeper gashes that were on the top and sanded it down nice and smooth. I also coated the inside with some conductive paint that I got off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below and you guys can tell me if I got the right stuff or the wrong stuff. I've never done conductive paint in a guitar before, so I don't know. I've never shielded guitars before. I'm always fine with them being noisy. <laughs> but anyways, uh, now I'm ready to do some painting on this thing. And I'm gonna do something I've always wanted to experiment with. Uh, I'm gonna use nail polish. I jumped on Amazon because of course I did. And there was a box of 12 nail polishes in one order. And I was just like, might as well get the big box with all the colors and go for it and then figure out what I wanna do from there. I looked it up online, what is nail polish made out of? Uh, the most common result I got was nitrocellulose, which is like the ideal guitar finish, according to most people. So I don't know if this particular one is made out of nitro nitrocellulose. Yep, it's there, high up on the ingredients list. It's mostly nitrocellulose. So this could be a lot of fun. It's gonna be really stinky. I don't know what I'm gonna do color-wise yet. Um, I've got a lot of like purplish, reddish colors in here. But I kind of want to get away from the gold and copper theme I already had. I've got plenty of gold guitars around here. So I'm going to put those to the side. I don't have any like apple green guitars like that. I don't know how much coverage I'll get off of one of these bottles though. So I don't want to like do a solid color and then get halfway through and be like, oh, I'm not going to have enough. So I want to do some kind of mix. Maybe I should do a burst, like hand painting in a burst with like speckling or something like that. And the dark can be on the outside, in which case I'd put this on last. Like dark to purple to like a pink. Nah, I don't know. This is, this is the hardest part, figuring out what I'm gonna do. I think because I don't know how far it's going to go, and I have so many of the pink and the purple colors, I'm just going to start with the green and see how this stuff acts on the wood, see where it goes, see if I'm happy with it, and then go from there. So I'm not wasting a color that I might want to use instead as far as the purples and the blues go. And uh, if this works out, if I get good spread on it, maybe I'll just go for green with like some gold mixed in or, you know, gr green and blues or something like that. I don't know. Let's just start having fun. I think that's really what I'm going for here the most. Am I supposed to shake these? It's just kind of experimenting and having fun. This might surprise you, but I've never <laughs> used nail polish before in any sort of capacity. Well, here goes nothing. Might as well test it right here. is kind of transparent. It might take a lot of layers of nail polish to get an opaque finish on this guitar. So maybe I should have done a base coat on this. I don't know. I think after two coats, it looks like it's getting thick enough to cover the wood and any imperfections. I should just go for it. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. I kind of wonder how the gold looks. Maybe I should go for like a splotchy color kind of look. The kind of colors all spread out, blending over the guitar. Maybe I should do a base of the gold and they do the green over it. Is that smart? I mean, already, I'm already into this experimenting. I 
think I'm going to have more fun if I get more random with this. If I go for like confetti of colors, don't worry about perfect brush strokes. Maybe it'll give me like a neat holographic like brushed look and kind of distract from imperfections. If I go for more of like a random brush stroke sort of thing. That green's already starting to set up. It sets up quick. I'm making a lot of big decisions here <laughs> on the fly. So I think what I'm working towards at the moment is kind of like a splotchy goldish greenish kind of burst with more gold colors in the center greens towards the middle and then maybe I'll go for like a blue on the outside ring really wonder how much paint is actually in one of these bottles I know a lot of this is going to be covered by the pit guard but I'm here might as well do it right Kind of like a gummy worm color scheme, right? Yellow and green. I always liked the yellow and green gummy worms. If I had known I was going to lean into the green so hard, I would have just ordered green <laughs> nail polishes instead of getting so many purples and reds and stuff. Sometimes it's good to have a plan. You know what? Sometimes it's just good to have fun and be prepared to just kind of experiment. And I think that's where I wanted to live with this guitar. So I just wanted to have fun. I wanted to relax. I wanted to try something new. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about it. And uh, at the end of the day, I was like, it's a late 90s Mexican strap body. It's not exactly rare. It's not like I need to save this wood. If I really mucked it up beyond, you know, repair, I could always just buy a new one off of eBay or something like that. Or buy, you know, like... A completely different strap body and throw the neck and all the hardware onto it. I don't have to protect this particular body and getting it perfect after all the damage this guitar body's already seen seems like a waste of time because it's already so imperfect and I don't have the woodworking skills to take it back to you know stock let alone the finishing skills to do a commercial finish on it. That's just not where I live skill wise. I'm starting to get quite an orange peel here in areas. I wonder how this would hold up to me hitting it with some light sandpaper once I get all the color down, like if I'll be able to take it to a slick finish. I know the reflection makes it kind of hard to see. Let's change the lighting a bit. It looks like I've got enough coverage for the top, but I wonder if I'll have enough to continue the theme to the back. There's a total possibility I don't. Getting it on thicker, I think, really is the key, but I'm nervous that I don't have enough paint to actually get it on that thick. But I'm gonna try to lean into some of these other areas, getting as thick as there, because that looks pretty good. They just dump a ton right here. And work it in. Oh, there's like a ball bearing inside, probably to help stir up the paint. I wonder if that means I'm getting to the end. It's hard to imagine that there's much paint left in there at this point. I feel like I've got to be really exhausting the green. I think I'll come in with the gold and do a stronger burst line 
inside here. I think I'm getting to the end of this jar. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a very imperfect finish, to say the least. But I'm having fun. All right, let's dive back into some gold. Maybe I should have just done a drip finish on this. Because it kind of drips pretty fun. I turned off the overhead light and it's helping show on the camera what I'm seeing better uh, than what you guys were seeing. Yeah. Yeah. It is bumpy, 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 that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know, should I introduce more colors? I kind of wish I'd done more of a pour thing. I can always let this dry and then decide if I like it or not and go from there. I definitely learned some lessons doing this about working with this paint, how thick it needs to be, how it starts to gum up when you're using it. I mean, this could look really cool. It's too bad I'm out of green. I can't finish the edges. I, I'm, I'm here. I should just go for it. I should start painting the edges blue. Ah, I hate this. I don't like where this is going. I don't like the blue on there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it set. I'm going to look at the results. And then I'm going to decide where to go from there. I might decide to just take all these purpley blue colors and whatnot and do like a pour finish after sanding this flat. Get it nice and flat and then do pour stuff and let it kind of spread out and self level and just use all the colors and get weird with it. All right, so I just brought it in from drying outside in the sun. <laughs> I don't know if it was from uh, just the wood being kind of untreated and raw or sitting out in the sun and drying quickly, but it got all these like hilarious bubbles all over it that are already starting to decompress inside. So I'm assuming that's from the heat of being outside. So letting it dry in the sun, obviously not a good idea. Um, pretty gloopy, pretty textured, but I think if I let this get nice and hard, I could give it a light sand to be pretty flush and then give it a clear coat for a shine. I kind of like the solid color quality of the green where you kind of see brush strokes and kind of gets like iridescent and stuff on the edges. I don't know. I don't think this is the worst idea ever. I think uh, the execution could be better. I think now that I've worked with the, uh, the paint a little bit, I understand how it works a little better. Um, I'm starting to see wood grain starting to pop through. So it goes on really thin. Um, I'm going to end up sanding off the top of this, I'm sure, or experimenting with uh, sanding it down and getting it smooth before I take it all the way off. I'm in the experimental mode right now with this guitar. Um, so to continue the experimental mode stuff today, I think I'm going to do that drip pour stuff I was talking about earlier with the other colors. I mean, honestly, if I go through all these colors and it doesn't end up being the color of the guitar and I end up taking it all back down to wood, I'm fine with it. I'm totally fine just like having fun experimenting right now. All right, so let's get started. Might as well start out with a color that's already open. Give it a shake. I just want to do like pour stuff and let it kind of like self level. This might end up being pretty wild. 
It's going to be drippy, that's for sure. Maybe I should have a straw to like blow it around. This is going to be fun. Guys, I'm excited. Are you excited? <laughs> I think this is a much better idea than like painting it all on. I think I should save the stringy drips for after there's lots of big globs going on. A little lightheaded from all that blowing. No jokes. Let's bring in some copper color now. I found that ball bearing. It starts to dry pretty quick when you're blowing it. I worry about it getting too clumpy. It's, when this dries, it's going to need a nice sand down. Which might, you know, give some interesting effects. One color left I haven't used on here other than the green and the gold. Oh, and I've got a white one too. It's darker blue. I have it. <laughs> no fun putting your mouth on paint that's on your blowing straw. Now it's time to get wild. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> All right, let's revisit the black. It looks like an old lady's couch. All right, and there's one color I haven't used is white. Is it actually white though, or is it like a clear gel? Yeah. Well, guys, <laughs> this is. Stupid, but it's also kind of really fun. It looks like an old lady's couch or, you know, a blouse or something like that. I'm interested to see how it dries out and if it's possible for me to knock it down flat with some sandpaper and what that looks like. I can already tell that some of it is soaking up into the wood grain and drying in the wood. Um, so some of the thicker stuff might still be kind of gloopy or might all just kind of soak in flat. Judging off of the green side, I don't think it's going to all soak in flat at all. I think it's going to gel up and gloop up. Maybe the real interesting part will be sanding this down and seeing if it's stained the wood in an interesting way. <laughs> but anyways, um, that's been my experience. Let me turn on the uh, overhead light again. <laughs> 
it might look really cool when it's dried. It is not my taste right now, though. I'm glad I did this. I've, I've had a blast doing this. This is a fun experiment. And I think this is really, you know, I think this is one of the reasons to buy affordable guitars like used Mexican strats and whatnot, squires and things, and experiment with taking the paint off and having fun. Guitars are a really unique object in that, yeah, they're like a, this technical object where the frets need to be just right and the intonation needs to be just right and you can play it in this technical way, but they're also supposed to be this object of expression and experimenting and just, you know, going your own path. And I think having fun with paint and taking paint off and putting it back on and experimenting with looks is part of it. And that's that's why there's such a huge market for aftermarket parts and, you know, pre-painted bodies and relics and stuff like that. People want to experiment. People want to play around with their look and their personal identity. And your guitar definitely is part of your personal identity. So anyways, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for, you know, how I develop this guitar. This has been part two. I'm sure there's going to be a part three, part four, probably a part five until I find the finish that I want and I put this thing all back together. As a reminder, I am going to be dropping some upgrade stuff into here. I've got these uh, Graph Tech ratio tuners. They're pretty cool. And a set of pickups from Octave Doctor. So check out the links to those guys down below. And oh, also I'm going to get a wiring harness from Gun Street Wiring Shop. So check out that link as well. All right. Bye everybody. Stay grounded. <laughs>